Good morning, Sunrise. It is great to be connected here together today. I want to invite our ushers to come on down, pass out our friendship folders, an opportunity for you to sign in your names, pass them down the row, learn the names of people that you are worshiping with today, pass them back down the row so they can learn your names as well. A few announcements to share with you as we begin worship. A charge conference for Sunrise United Methodist Church is scheduled from Monday, February 7th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. At a charge conference, all members have a voice, but only church council may vote. The purpose of this charge conference is a modification of the mortgage loan that is held by Methodist Helping Methodists Foundation. This change of loan terms would reduce monthly obligations from $14,510 a month to $8,859 a month. A more detailed document will be communicated next week. You may request the Zoom link from our office manager, Patty, by emailing her at officemanager at sunriseumc.com. So if you'd like to participate and be a part of that experience as we vote on a mortgage change, it's exciting stuff, right? It really is exciting stuff if you think about it. I mean, changing a monthly payment from 14500 to 8800 that's a big, big, significant change. And that's one that we celebrate and we also celebrate with our finance team that has worked to enable that to happen. So that is happening. Also, from the missions team, you may have heard that we are, our next initiative is that we are bringing together donations for food. And I've got a question for all of you, and this is connected, I promise. Who's your favorite superhero? I heard a Thor. What else did I hear? Iron Man? Superman? Well, personally, my favorite superhero is one that's local here to Sunrise Church, and he's here today. Come on down, soup can man. <laughs> soup can man has been with us for several years as we have regularly had a collection of either food or specifically soup as we head towards the Super Bowl. And this year, the missions team is leading us in a collection of food for those in need in our community, of soup and food. And uh, that's going to be happening um, on Valentine's, uh, the week of Valentine's Day. And their theme this year is Shower the Springs with Love. And this is a great opportunity for you to share the blessings that you have had with others and bless them. We have a collection point out these doors to the right, right over there as you're heading towards the restrooms. And you can bring in your stuff right now. And then the week of Valentine's Day, it's going to go out to the community to bless them, to say, we love you, we care about you, and we're glad we can help. And we have a champion to lead us in that effort, and that is Soup Can Man. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, Soup Can Man. He does have special powers, and you're gonna have to find out what those are, but let's stand up, and as we do, say good morning to those around us, and if you have a chance, say good morning to Soup Can Man. I guess Opera Man might be a close second, just in my background, so. Would you please join me in our opening response? Who are we gathered here this morning? We are the people of sunrise. What is God's vision for our future? Change our world one life at a time. Good. Let sunrise people worship God.
All right, there's, there's just one thing about this tune that it just always makes me smile, and I'm not sure if you're smiling right now or not. But can we go back to that first slide in the verse? Can you go back to that really quick? So, okay, next slide, please. So, just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your bird unto the Lord and just leave it there. So if that doesn't make you smile, I don't know how I can get you to smile this morning. But can we sing that first verse again? Let's go back and start that over. God's people said. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. In peace in us we pray. Unveil while we're made. Come set our hearts and reign with hope like wildfire in our day.
kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are the hope on earth. Build your And all God's people said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Oh. Anybody need to breathe? Very good. I need a favor from a few friends. I'd like to call Spencer Smith, our tech director, and Jung and Josh Kim. Will you please come down here and help me with something? AJ is putting some chairs out here, and I would love for you to sit in these chairs for me because we have a little bit of a surprise for you. Kids, will you come up? I need your help too. Any kids that we've got, we just want to come surround these three. Come on up. See, typically we've got Jung playing the piano as you're coming up here, but <laughs> she's playing air piano right now. So kids, I'm going to talk to you, and maybe you can just turn around to look at me. I'm going to be over here. So Today, we are talking about service. And in Galatians 5.13, we read that we are all called to service. We're called to serve. And not, not to serve so that we are blessed, but rather so that we can bless others. Do you know some ways that you've served? You can think about like doing your chores, that's serving your family. You did that? That's really great. You got four dollars? <laughs> she did that and she got four dollars, so she was blessed with four dollars. Anybody else? Do you have chores? Who's got chores? What, what, what are your chores? Just yell them out. Go. Uh, dishes? Dishes. Go. What's a chore? Do you clean your room? Who has, who has to clean their room? Who has to clean the bathroom? Oh. <laughs> Moms and dads, who has to clean the bathroom? That's right. Well, we are called to serve, and we are blessed because we serve. And I've asked these three people to come up here because they have been wonderful servants of the kingdom of God here with us at Sunrise United Methodist Church for quite some time. But today is the last Sunday that they are in their role of service here at the church. And it doesn't mean that they're disappearing forever, but it does mean that we're not going to see them consistently doing what they've done for so very long. And we just want to say thank you to all of these people for all the service that they have given us. We have Jung Kim, who has played the piano for us. Who likes the piano? And over on the other side is Josh Kim, who's played the keyboard for us. And here with Sunrise, they've become known as the fabulous Kim duo. And they tour all over the globe. And 
We're excited that they've made a home here at Sunrise for many years with us. And then also Mr. Spencer Smith, who has been our tech director for over a decade. You know, one of the things that we do when we say thank you is that we offer gifts of appreciation. And today we have some gifts that we'd like to share. So, Jung, this is for you. And here we go. And Josh, we thought you needed a double dose of chocolate. <laughs> and your mom might want to get some of this, but it's up to you. <laughs> Spencer, we have the appropriate gift for you because we know you well. And these are flowers from your, your uh, favorite college, colors. And we've got your, your, your Coke Zero and your black licorice, which is the excellent bouquet for Spencer Smith. Jung, we want to say thank you so much for all that you've done. And Spencer, thank you. And Josh, thank you so very much. Thank you. Oh, you don't get to get up yet. You got to get up. So, kids, we all say thank you. Can you say thank you? Oh, that's not very loud. Let's do that. We'll try that in just a second. Hold on a second, because we're going to get everybody involved in saying thank you. But now we're going to do it really, really loud, and we're going to celebrate sunrise style. So if it, you don't like loud noises, this is the time to cover your ears, because this is going to get loud in here. And everyone said, thank you! Kids, would you pray with me? Lord God, thank you so much for our dear friends, Jung, Josh, and Spencer. Thank you for all they have given of themselves for the kingdom of God together here at Sunrise United Methodist Church. And we just pray for them today. We pray that wherever the next chapter takes them, that they are blessed, that they feel your presence, and that they know that you are with them always, as are we and they will remain with us in our hearts always. And together, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you! together and exhale and let us sing together as we remain seated.
us pray. O oh Lord, what a morning you have given us to gather and worship you. The mountains have snow, the sky is that beautiful blue only you can create. Our hearts are full of the wonder of your love. You continue to bless this congregation even when we are unaware. You protect us and love us unconditionally. Only you are capable of making things so right in our universe. We praise and glorify your name. As we pray our prayers to you, Lord Jesus, help us to always do so with the faith you have given us so freely. You have called us to live by faith, and in our faith we know you are with us and with all of our military, our responders, our police, and all those of the medical profession. We choose to place our faith and trust in you, Lord. We ask that you place your healing hands on those who are in need. Hearts are heavy for those who have lost loved ones, and there are so many who are in the hospitals. Your comfort always lifts the spirit. Now, as one voice, hear us as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Wherever you are joining us from today, whether it be here in the sanctuary or at home, we are so glad that we are connected. And one of the ways that we are connected is through our offering. Right now in this moment, there's an opportunity to text a gift to Sunrise at 719-270-4478. You can mail in a gift or drop off a gift at the church office anytime. But right now we invite the ushers forward to receive our offering.
one voice God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, friends. Thank you for joining us out there and out there. Um, Linda, we're praying for you as you have knee surgery and as you recover. Blessings to you. God's beloved, we're here to dive into um, the Word. Before we do that, I've got one announcement to make. Um, past two weeks, Olin's been up here sharing, hey, we've got a budget shortfall. And he gave this big, hairy, audacious number, $100,000. And so I wanted to let you know that we have chipped away at that last service. I got to announce that we were down to the $32,000 shortfall, which is, I believe, if my math is correct, a $68,000 this is what we got. Um, this service, I'm here to announce, it is 29.5. I had somebody go, hey, let's get that under 30. And I was like, yeah. So shortfall, 29.5, please keep giving. Um, and thank you for all of you who have been so wonderfully generous. Um, that big, hairy, audacious number seems far more manageable now, doesn't it? Amen. Um, today's scripture I'm excited about. I want to give one preface, Mary, before you dive in. Um, the scripture starts out, for this reason. I don't mean to give anything away. For this reason. And, and when Paul writes a for or a therefore, I've learned a Bible teacher once told me that you have to ask, what is the therefore therefore? <laughs> anyway, it stuck with me. And so, for this reason, and you may be asking yourself, well, what reason and the reason is that Paul has spent the first two chapters sharing the good news of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what he says is basically that God has done everything for our salvation, and that it's a free gift to us. And then Paul says, I've got this secret mystery that everybody is welcome through Jesus to God, that those who are close to God are welcome but that those who are far away, who are not Israelites, who are not Jews, are also welcome into God's kingdom. And so this is what Paul exclaims in the first chunks of Ephesians. And then he says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. 
Today's scripture reading is from the book of, of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There is a moment, two moments, where these scriptures came alive for me. And the first one, I was driving through Canada, and I noticed as I was driving through Canada that all of a sudden we hit the spot where there were purple flowers as far as the eye could see. And so I drove th further, and there were more purple flowers, and so I just had to stop and, like, take in the beauty. And so I, I trespassed, forgive me, and walked among these purple flowers, fingers dangling, and it was lavender, and so the scent was just incredible. And so I just kept turning, and as far as the eye could see, it was these incredible purple flowers. And Paul's prayer, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, this idea of planted there, may have power together with all God's holy people to know how long, how wide, how deep, and how high is God's love. And as that purple just washed over me with the fragrance and all of that, I'm like, wow, this is what God means when he talks about the treasury and the expanse of his love. One other moment, I was with a group of people and we were sailing in the Bahamas. We got to sail the boat ourselves, and as day turned to night, we had to sail through the night, which was awesome and scary. And I remember it was middle of the night, and we were out in the middle of the ocean, no other lights around us, and I was doing my tasks, and all of a sudden I just stopped and looked up. I was like, wow, horizon to horizon, it was stars, Milky Way, constellations, and then the stars were reflected in the water because then the ocean's going out to the horizon and it was just surrounded. I'm like, Paul, this is what you mean. I want you to understand how long, how wide, how deep, how high God's love is for us. This is what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Have you Ever been in one of those moments? Maybe it's the bluebells in Texas. Maybe it's the sunflowers in Oklahoma. Maybe Kansas too, yep. Maybe it's the corn in Iowa. Cheese and no, that doesn't work. I'm going to talk about Wisconsin. God's beauty of the cow-filled green pastures. Maybe it's the mountains and the wildflowers. Whatever it is, standing on the edge of the ocean, I pray that you could picture this God's treasury of love. How long, how wide, how deep, and how high. I'd like to invite you to, if you'd like, open your Bibles to Ephesians 3. We're going to pick out a couple phrases like this one that we're going to dive in deeper and extrapolate upon because I think they're so theologically incredible, but also personally, intimately incredible. Paul shares, verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through your spirit. I pray out of his glorious riches, his treasury, his wealth, his extravagance, that you would receive power. And this line that Paul uses, out of God's riches, I want to share a little bit more about that because 
we've got our idea of riches. We see the Elon Musks, the Bill Gates, the people who have extravagant riches that are far beyond anything that we can imagine. Something that my bank account cannot compare to. And we think of what these riches can do, the houses. I've got this dream of a house that's on top of the mountain next to the ocean. I don't think that place exists, but if it does, my house is going to be there. Um, Probably the other side of heaven, but that's all right. But we think of riches as the Lamborghinis, the houses and white picket fences and all of these things, and God's got something else in mind. In Ephesians 2, right before this, Paul starts to share a little bit. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made you alive with Christ. Verse 7, he says, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. As Paul is sharing about God's riches, he's not sharing about the currency we use. He's sharing that God's love, His mercy, His kindness, His compassion, His joy, those are the riches of God. Which is important when he shares about how long, how wide, how deep, and how high He's explaining God's treasury. Here's His riches that He lavishes upon us. Here's why these are important. God's riches aren't the things and stuff that pass away. In this very spot yesterday, I did a funeral. And and the awesome man, Jack, and... um, He had done so many things as an educator, as a man of God, and it was clear that Jack was rooted and established in in this love because his kindness, his compassion, were the things that people talked about. We shared this scripture, that after all these things, everything passes away, these three things remain. These three things abideth. Faith hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. God's treasures aren't things that can be stolen. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But these are the things that can't be swiped. These are imperishable. God's riches are unbreakable. God's riches do not tarnish. They do not fade. They do not fall away. They are different than the riches we have. I want to share one more reason why God's riches being the things of love, joy, peace, grace, mercy, how they're so different from our riches is so important. I've had the pleasure of leading, it's been more than 200 mission trips all across the world, Africa, Central America, South America, Pippa Passes, Kentucky, Gary, Indiana, all over. And what I've realized, some, I've gone to some of the most desolate, impoverished, broken places on the earth, bringing the hope of Jesus. But, but as I got there, I've received something as well because I've met families and people and children and churches of God where they haven't had any of the riches we have. They haven't had the money. I remember bringing soccer balls to an orphanage and I brought a couple of them and I'd throw them out and a thousand kids just went running trying to kick the same soccer ball I threw a second and like 500 of them came over here and went after that soccer ball and we kept throwing about soccer balls because they didn't have them. They didn't have riches, but what they did have was an incredible joy and an amazing love. And and they got to share compassion with me and with each other. They didn't have the riches that we have They had the riches of God. 
And you'll see this all the places you go. Family celebrating this abundant love. People experiencing all these different things. And it's incredible. Good. We're not there yet. We'll get there in a minute. I got a little more left. Good. I pray that out of these glorious riches that God would strengthen you so that he might dwell in your hearts. This is the second part of the scripture that's huge, that the God of this universe, Jesus, would come and dwell in us. And he comes in us so that he might start to mess about, that he might start to change us, transform us, work in us. So I want to share, there's a couple shows that really illustrate what happens. Um, any of you HGTV folks? Tell me if you recognize any of these. Some will be HGTV, some won't. Fixer, Upper. Flip or Flop. Love it or list it. Extreme Makeover Home Edition. One that plays in my house often. Bob the Builder. And this one, my dad's favorite. It was always one that he watched and I'd watch with him. This Old House. Anyone? Amen. And this is sort of the stuff we watch on those shows is what Paul explains that Jesus does, that he, he comes and makes his home in our hearts. But he doesn't just leave it as is. He starts to transform and change. He starts to root us and establish us in love and all the riches of Christ so that we start to change and transform. I know it sounds fantastic, but it's, it's the promise and the hope of Christ. And it's something I experienced in my life. I was in college and I met a group of people and they loved me. I don't know why they loved me. It didn't make any sense. They barely knew me, but they cared about me. And they loved me in a way I'd never seen before. And they're like, Matt, you're wonderful. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not. And they're like, you are. And, and I realize now that it was the love of Christ in them flowing out to me. And at one point they're like, hey, do you want to know Jesus? And I'm like, is that what helps you love so well? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, uh-huh, I want to know him. And so I accepted Christ, and instantly, in that moment, he starts to come into my heart, and he starts to change me. And a year later, my mom called me up. She's like, Matt, we started going to church. I'm like, awesome. Do you want to know why? That, that's how my mom does this, and I love it. And I'm like, sure. Why, Mom? Because I, I was getting better at honoring my parents. It's a thing. Why, Mom? Well, we've noticed this change in you. And we figured if God can do that in you, any of you reading between the lines like I did? She didn't say it, but I knew it because I was a punk. And Christ comes into our lives and he starts to change us and transform us. And if we open up our lives to him, he starts to change every area of our lives. And sometimes we get very Gandalf-like. We throw our staff down and you're like, you shall not pass. Sort of like, God, I've got these areas. Take this. I don't want this anger anymore. Fix that. i got these other areas. There's some things and stuff that I want. Don't transform me there. So we tend to block them out. And Paul says here in Christ that, as Christ comes in, he starts to work in us and he fills us with all these riches of God. We get rooted and established in these fields of love, joy, grace that are long, wide, deep, and high. We get rooted in God's treasury and we start to get filled to the measure with all the fullness of God. We get filled with everything that Christ is, his riches, his nature, and it fills us. God is so big. There's one more thing I want to share about his riches. We're wrapping up with this. 
God's riches, again, are so different. If I take my ATM card and go out on a shopping spree, it's going to run out quickly. I can then move on to my credit card and start hitting negatives and be in debt. But at some point, it's all going to run out. But God's riches are so different. Like, I've got three kids. And I would never say, because God's riches don't work this way, to my youngest, Ezekiel, you're great. But I need to apologize. I have spent all of my love on Georgia and Ella. You got nothing, kid. I'm going to name you Sue because you're going to have to be tough. That's a song. And so God's riches, because they're so long, wide, high, and deep, they don't run out. Where time, like the funeral last yesterday, time runs out. Finances run out. My patience sometimes runs out. And yet God fills us with these riches that don't run out. I can spend all of my love on Georgia, Ella, and have plenty left over for Ezekiel. And you, and my friends and people I have not met yet but seem pretty cool, and I'd like to work on loving on them too. God's love fills us so that it overflows and it keeps going. God's beloved, may we keep loving because we ain't going to run out. May we keep offering joy because it's a resource when we go to bed at night, it's going to be flooded within us the next morning. As we go out, may we share his riches, his love, his grace, his joy with all we come in contact with. God's beloved, let's pray. Holy Lord, your riches are incredible, incomparable, innumerable, and cool. Your riches are so expansive that you say, that we won't even fully understand that that knowledge of your love is too great for us, that we can't comprehend how long, how wide, how deep, and how high your love is. But Lord, we've experienced it, and it is so, so sweet and incredible. We invite you, Jesus, into our hearts and to take more and more of us the parts that we're keeping for ourselves. May we open those up to you so we'd look less like us and more like you. May we have each room open so that we might be filled more and more with your riches, that we might overflow with those to all around us. Help us to feel your love and share your love, to experience your grace and then lavish that on others to have your joy that stays even in the midst of brokenness, pain, loss, COVID, fear. May your joy continue to bubble up and transform us from the inside out. Holy Spirit, do this work in us, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Join me for God of love and God of power, number 578. God of love and God of
those of you that are here, we've got kneelers if you want to come and offer more of your lives and your areas to Christ. If you'd like to experience the Christ in you and celebrate that through communion, we have that here. For those of you at home, if there's bread and juice in your kitchen, the body and blood of Jesus Christ and enjoy. Paul ends, we didn't read this today because if I shared too much of it, I'd start preaching more and the Baptists would beat us to lunch. Verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations and forever and ever. Amen. Paul says it that way. The songwriters say it, deep and wide, deep and wide. I've got a fountain flowing deep and wide. That Christ in us starts bubbling up all of these riches of God. His love, which is unending, long, wide, deep, and high. God's beloved, may you experience these riches of Christ bubbling up in you so much that you can't contain them. And they spread to your family, your workplaces, your schools, everybody you come in contact with, may they experience these riches of Christ in you and through you as Christ lives in you doing his work to transform. Go now in the abundant love, the incredible grace, and the riches of Christ Jesus that are yours now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.